Hi, and welcome to Sisters Strong, a podcast and video series about possibility. I'm your host, Betsy Wiersma. This podcast is our way to share ideas, insights, and experiences for all of us to stand together for health and happiness. It's a toolkit of things that might work for you. Today, sharing her amazingness as an entertainment segment for fun is the amazing Carol Calkins and the crowd goes wild. Ah! Hi. Okay, and I'm also calling out, not only do we have Carol, we have Carol in the cutest ever Norwegian sweater that we got in the airport and she has rocked all over the world. This is actually my Iceland sweater, Arctic, Arctic Explorer, my favorite sweater I wore it the whole time. Yeah, there you go. See, so, you know, you've got a ha happiness hangover from our great trips last year. So Carol, today um, I wanted to really give people a break with some great poetry. And I want the, the best part of this is the story behind how you became a poet. So will you go back a little bit and tell people who you are and then a little bit about um, your life outside poetry and then how you found poetry? Sure, that sounds great. Well, for 42 years, I worked in healthcare and higher education. And I met some really interesting, wonderful, wonderful people, had a lot of great friendships, and um, got involved at one point in cabin experience, which was life changing for me in so many ways. And I'll share more about that when I talk about my poetry. And really, the big thing that happened for me is a dear, dear friend of mine had breast cancer. And she fought it like a trooper. I mean, she did everything she could and she had such a positive attitude. She was just amazing. My friend Linda was an extraordinary human being. And about a year after she had had many surgeries, radiation, chemo, the whole works, it came back with a vengeance. And I remember talking to her right when she found that out. And so she was given a very short time frame. And, um, you know, a matter of three to six months, something like that. And two weeks later, she was gone. And what happened for me is I meditate every morning for an hour. It's my time of prayer, peacefulness, calming my soul, connecting with me and the universe. And I had this sense of Linda coming to me. And all of a sudden, I got this poem we've said goodbye a thousand times. And it was so appropriate because so many people were saying, I didn't have time to say goodbye because she passed away two weeks after she got the bad diagnosis. So I sat down at my computer and it was like automatic writing. And I wrote my first poem. I'd say about three months later, I had five, 600 poems and to the date I probably have in the thousands. And so that's basically how I got into poetry and I love it. Well, I think there's a backstory too, because I know you so well, that um, when you were at Camp Experience, one of our themes is always, you know, like be your best and you can do it and all that. And you said when you were a child or when you were young, you had actually had a journal and thought about poetry or you wrote poetry when you were young. There was some story in here. Okay, what happened was when I was, I started writing and putting books together. And part of the reason I did that was because I kept meeting camp sisters, extraordinary, amazing women who encouraged me. I, I can still remember being with Char Bloom one night. We had a camp event. It was, and the whole staff stayed overnight at a hotel. And I was reading some of my poems to her and Char said, you should put it together in a book. And then I went to Kathy Hawk and she advised me and told me to connect with and the next thing I knew, I had all this, all these things happen. I had books, five books. Okay, now do show and tell, go slow and show them the first one. Well, what happened was, and it wasn't with the first book, but I think it was with, oops, whoop, 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 there. I think it was with one of the later books, this is Bring Poetry to Life. 
I was going through some papers looking for something. I was looking for some medical papers actually for a new doctor I was going to. And I found a poem that I had written years and years ago. And I read it and I, I, it was really good. I was really surprised. I had never known that I actually was a poet. And that was kind of reinforcing to me that I had really found my path and it was the right path and the right expression for me. Well, we are so lucky. The world is lucky. So how many books do you have now so far? Um, I have five and I have many more poems that I could put in books. Um, and tell everybody the names of the five, so. Okay, the first one is Bring Poetry to Life. The second one is Bring Poetry into Your Life. The third one was inspired by you, Betsy. We were coming up on the 10th anniversary of 9-11. This is the only book that I actually did research on. All of the rest of them, the poems, came through uh, just naturally. And this is called Bring Poetry to Freedom. And it's a tribute to the 10th anniversary of 9-11. Bring Poetry to Spirit. And then my last one was Bring Poetry to Heart. And then another inspiration from another camp sister Let's see, where is my? I, I love being inspiration to you. Uh, I put together a set of 24 cards of some of my favorite poems. The one on the top is called Infinite Possibilities. And it's really cool. It comes in this nice little package and it makes a great gift. And it's but wonderful anyway, to put in really cards. Cool. Yeah, and into other into greeting cards into places you can put your one poem at a time, or I do multiple poems. It's a wonderful product. So, it's really fun. I really am enjoying it, and a lot of people give me feedback how much they like to just pick out a poem for a daily um, inspiration, or they put them in cards to send to people. You know, so it's really kind of a neat thing. So. Okay, well, so now we know the background of your brilliance. So let's share some poems um, and let's just do some readings because this is a little entertainment podcast and video today. So I think I asked you to pick some and then I have my favorite one, which is above my desk. So are you prepared to do poem number one? Yes. Okay, um, the first poem is actually in this wonderful blessing journal. We're doing a lot of cross promotion on the show today. There you go. There's the blessing, the live big, dream big, dream big, live big, blessing journal. And a poem was of course, how you started that good journal. Okay, read that poem. What's it called? It's called, I have a dream, a brilliant dream. I have a dream, a brilliant dream of lifting and full of power. It seems to flow with grace and ease. I know it surely is meant to be. I have a vision, a crystal clear vision, radiating an energized beam of light with focus true and kept in sight. I know I'll reach that momentous height. I have some thoughts, expansive thoughts, boundless beyond comprehension. As each transcends and manifests, mirrors my inner self as reflection. I have a hope, a glorious hope of all that's yet to come, valuing life with enormous certainty. My dream is now magnificent reality. I have a dream, a brilliant dream, uplifting and full of power. It seems to flow with grace and ease. I know it surely is meant to be. Oh, I love that one. I love that so much. I put it in my own blessing journal. That's a very wonderful one. Um, and that one's really cool because it really, you know, I, I like your cadence. Your cadence of all your poems are very similar um, and, and they have some unexpected twists and turns. I always find them so great. Okay, are you doing poem number two or tell me when I get to do mine? Okay, um, I'm going to do the one I found the other day that I felt like 
during this time of sort of uncertainty and craziness, I felt like this poem just, it, it made me feel calmer. It made me feel better. Um, so anyway, I shared it with some of my friends and camp sisters and family. It's called Love and Light Surround You. Life is filled with ups and downs. None of these define us. Look within your pure essence. Know that's where you find so much. Each have perfect qualities, characteristics that make us whole. Reflect upon your uniqueness, for that is truly spirit's call. Love and light surround you, cover you with hope. Let all those divine blessings heal and lift you up. Oh, I love that one. Love and light do surround us. And I hope everyone listening to this or watching this just feels like, hey, we just can take a breath take a breather and listen to this great poetry. So I'm going to do my favorite one and then you can do the last one. You have one last okay. one. Um, so this one is heaven and earth and it was a poem that Carol wrote. And then we used it to dedicate to our dear, dear friend, uh, Barbara Bloodgood, who we lost to terrible cancer. It turned out to be esophageal cancer that went all uh, everywhere. It got loose. And um, she was just a beautiful person, part of the Camp Experience Committee forever, one of our dear sisters, somebody we traveled to Africa with, and we had been underground in a tunnel that they called hell. And then we came to the surface of light because we were in total darkness. And it was a kind of a, a ritual from touring the caves of Lalabella uh, in Africa. And so Carol wrote this poem, and I'm gonna look up because it's I keep it above my desk, uh, Heaven and Earth. The line between heaven and earth is, translucent, is a translucent veil, not unlike the pre-dawn glow changing with a blink into full sunlight. The line between winter and spring is but an instant with new growth blooming into life before our eyes. The line between fear and bravery is a moment of choice, facing challenges with hope, strength, and love. The line between people's hearts is a precious con connection, lasting forever and a day and touches the essence of the universe. The line between sorrow and joy is a blur, sweet memories of what was creating a smile of happiness. The line between disharmony and peace is only temporary, for peace is a natural state for all spiritual beings. The line between human being and spiritual being is non-existent, for we always have been and will be pure spirit and radiant light. Yay, one of my favorites ever, January uh, 2018. Oldie but goodie. Well, you know the thing that's interesting about that poem? Well, first of all, Barbara traveled with Betsy and I and some other camp sisters to Ethiopia. So we got to know her on a totally different level. And I know that that was a highlight in her life. But the thing about it is I wrote that poem and gave it to Barbara. We knew she was toward the end of her life in a human body. And I gave it to her about two weeks before she passed on. And that really meant a lot to me to share that with her. And it's also one of my favorite poems. It just flowed when I was thinking of Barbara and the kind of spirit she had. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, we have time for one more poem and then we'll tell everyone how to find you. Okay, um, I think Infinite Possibilities is the poem I want to read. Infinite possibilities surround you every day. Don't let the clutter get in your way. See what's around you, opportunities galore. So many avenues, just pick and choose. Look with clarity, open your eyes wide. Full array of options, merely need to decide. Which one is best, touches my heart, expresses my true being, leads me down my path. Beauty of all this is not your selection, just by making a choice, the universe rejoices. 
Oh, I love infinite possibilities. Another one I have framed right over here on my desk. So Carol, um, tell them how to email you if they're interested in learning more about your poem products. Okay, um, my email is the letter C, the letter K, my last name, Calkin, C-A-L-K-I-N-S, at Comcast.net. So if you get in touch with me, if any of these poems inspire you and you would like me to send you a copy, let me know. Oh, that's a, such a wonderful gift. Well, we really appreciate you being the executive director of the Global Sisterhood Network, uh, a traveler and an envoy for camp experience around the world, and a wonderful member of the committee and my very, very small personal home team staff. So thank you so much for your great work in the world. Thank you all for listening to Sisters Strong. This is a podcast and a video series about possibility. We are part of the Global Sisterhood Podcast Network, which are women on purpose with messages for good. Please share our helpful messages and uplifting energy and these great poems today with other people that are looking for ideas for a happy, healthy life. I'm your host, Betsy Wiersma. Bye and thank you.